This is Rights at Risk, a podcast from the World Organization Against Torture. We explore human rights through stories from the front lines and analysis from experts. I'm your host, Claire Marie Germain. The UN calls Yemen an entirely man made catastrophe. Two factions are fighting for control, the Houthis and allies of former President Ali Abdullah Saleh against Yemen's internationally recognized government and the Saudi-led coalition. A UN human rights report is calling this the largest humanitarian crisis in the world. Sometimes we forget that behind all these numbers it's actual people and lives. The war in Yemen doesn't make the headlines, but since 2014, this forgotten conflict has claimed more than 380,000 lives and forced more than 4 million people to leave their homes. On Rights at Risk today, we'll explore one of the most disturbing aspects of this conflict, the blockade of basic products to the civilian population. The strategy of war was instrumental in what is known as today's worst humanitarian crisis. Our first guest, Ali Jamil, works for the Yemeni human rights NGO, Muatana. In 2011, there was a popular uprising against former President Ali Abdullah Saleh. And after that, there was a, a political initiative from the Gulf countries that gives power to the vice president for two years and then an election should happen. But unfortunately, the election didn't happen because the Houthi armed group took control by power over the capital, Sana'a, and then they started to take control uh, to, to more areas. A coalition of nine countries launched their aerial attacks in Yemen to support the, the authority of President Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi. This coalition is led by Saudi Arabia and UAE. So until now, we have the, the Houthi armed forces that took control of Sana'a, and then we have the coalition that supports President Hadi. So to put it simply, it's a fight between the Houthis and the coalition for control over the country. There are different claims of what they want, but it's a conflict over power. The pro-government Saudi-led military coalition, which is fighting healthy rebels, has imposed a blockade on ports in Yemen. The coalition started to control all the airports, seaports, and land ports of Yemen. They started to implement restrictions on the passage of goods and passengers from in and out of Yemen. There is, there is a big impact on, on the restrictions of the flow of goods to many areas in Yemen, like, for example, the fuel crisis. It was really, really difficult for anyone to get fuel. And like as a sequence of that, you won't have public transportation easily. There is high prices for bread and elementary uh, goods. According to the World Food Programme, Yemen depends almost entirely on food imports, and that's making life even harder for people in the poorest Arab country. As the prices of goods go up, salaries go down. Most of those working in the public sector have lost their jobs as a result of the war. Majority of people in Yemen, or let's say like 30% or maybe more, are relying on public salaries because most of the population are working with the government. So they're teachers or soldiers or they work in the public sector. It's quite a big sector in Yemen. And now, since 2016, there is no salaries for the public sector. And this makes a huge problem. Half of Yemen's population is food insecure which simply means they don't know where their next meal will come from. Our second guest, Valérie Gabar, is a specialist in international humanitarian law, which is the law governing armed conflict. 
She tells us about the wide-reaching consequences of the lack of food, medicine, but also and mostly fuel on the civilian population. No fuel means no electricity. No electricity in Yemen means no running hospital and no clean water. More than 80 of 90 percent of everything that I use in Yemen comes from imports. So any restriction to the entries of food, oil, or medicine in Yemen have a direct impact on the humanitarian situation of the population. In May 2022, according to the World Food Program, 19 million of Yemenis were food insecure, 3.5 million acutely malnourished. To some extent, I feel like that the numbers are so high that they, they are almost become meaningless. In April, the warring parties agreed to a ceasefire. Goods are slowly making their way back to the country. But this truce is fragile and the humanitarian crisis is still very much a reality. UNICEF says a child dies every 10 minutes from preventable diseases. That would equate to more than 500 children dead in those last four days alone. This humanitarian crisis has many routes, among which the blockade. By stopping boats, the coalition indirectly caused the death of Yemeni children and civilians. These could be considered war crimes. The coalition's official reason for the blockade is the arm embargo voted by the United Nations in its resolution 2216. The coalition uses this resolution as an excuse to stop boats coming in Houthi territories. But it seems like the arm embargo is a cover for a darker agenda. The real goal behind the blockage is not only the arm embargo, is that actually no arms have been found since this embargo have been put in place. And because the United Nations were very much aware of the restriction it caused on the arrival of essential goods into Yemen, the United Nations put in place uh, its own uh, control system of the boat. And despite this mechanism, the coalition have been maintaining its own control system and repeating, or even making a system that is even stronger, over what the, the United Nations is already doing. So it is clear that the goal of the coalition is not only here to implement Resolution 2016, but what is certain is that from inception this blockade had direct effect on worsening the humanitarian situation on the ground. It is clear that the coalition is very well aware of the consequences of the, the system of control that they have put in place. If it was proven that the blockade had deliberately been used to win the war by starving the civilian population in Houthi-controlled territories, then the coalition could be held responsible for a war crime. The UN estimated 60% of casualties in the war were caused by Saudi-led coalition airstrikes. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are often singled out for their role in the war in Yemen. But many NGOs also criticize the involvement of Western countries like France in this war. Anna Kiefer, our third guest, is a specialist in business litigation and arms sales with the NGO Sherpa. She tells us how some Western companies and countries are participating in the war in Yemen. The fleet of Saudi and UAE is made of French-built vessels. Information rapidly surfaced that French-built war material was being used to implement the blockade of Yemen. Because the equipment that is used is French, it has to be also maintained by these French companies. And it's, though most of the equipment was delivered before the start of the conflict, the maintenance is happening since the conflict started, so after 2015. And so without the maintenance and without the refurbishing of the frigates and the boats that are being used in the economic blockade, the economic blockade could not happen. So there could be a complicity of both the companies who provide these services, but also the French state which allows these services to happen. International law does not recognize the responsibility of legal entities such as companies in crimes but national justice systems sometimes do. In France, there have been cases where 
companies have been prosecuted for complicity in international crimes. We have at the moment the case of Lafarge. It's a cement company that's accused of providing aid and assistance to the Islamic State in Syria and through the financing of the this terrorist group could have possibly become complicit in crimes against humanity. Um, so this precedent could also help establish for arms company a, a risk of complicity if they are seen to be participating in crimes against humanity or in the case of Yemen also war crimes if the coalition is found guilty of war crimes in Yemen. Now, several human rights organizations are filing complaints against three companies who armed the coalition. They're accusing French arms firms Dassault, Thales and MBDA France of selling weapons that were used to kill civilians and consequently making them complicit of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Sometimes we forget that behind all these numbers, it's actual people and lives and that these lives matter. And often in this conflict, it looks like these lives have not seemed to matter to Western countries and third parties who have continued to enter into new contracts with coalition members and have continued to maintain the military equipment of the coalition, despite the knowledge that there are these war crimes and violations of international humanitarian law that, ha that are being perpetrated. And despite all these reports and UN experts calling for a stop to third states to provide weapons, the states have not responded and are continuing business as usual. So there's, since there's a, a hypocrisy of on the one side saying we are calling for an end to the economic blockade so that the Yemeni uh, humanitarian situation can be improved. But on the other hand, these states who are calling for an end to this crisis continue to maintain the equipment and continue to enter into new contracts with the coalition members. So the words don't match the action. <laughs> 